The basic principles of ISO 50001 address those of the energy management discipline in terms of what measures an organization needs to have in place to successfully manage its energy consumption and improve its performance. In terms of its relationship to other ISO standards, the one most closely linked is ISO 14001, which is the environmental management standard, and that is the one whose style and approach this standard has followed, the plan, do, check, act approach. So you're planning things, you're doing it, uh, seeing if it's working, and then you're, you're taking steps to improve and, and address any difficulties that may arise. So the intention was very much that if organizations uh, have been following that sort of ISO 14001 approach, that if they then want to move across, they should have the basic management practices in place that would enable that, that addition to be fairly straightforward. I mean, it does, of course, raise the question, well, why do you need an energy management standard? Because surely ISO 14000 is environmental management and energy comes under the environmental heading. And the answer and the experience so far with that is the reason for initiating the standard was that energy is now so far up the agenda as a very important and urgent international item that it does merit its own standard. And I think experience with 14,001 indicated that in many cases it didn't address energy as a particular priority, and if it did, not in any great depth. So this new standard goes into things in, in, in much more detail. The other relevant part, I suppose, speaking with a European hat on, is that in Europe now we have already published the European Energy Management Standard, EN 16001. And one of the things that we're clearly going to be looking at very carefully is that there is compatibility and consistency between the ISO standard and the existing European standard because the plan would be that the European standard would be withdrawn, although it's only recently been published, and then superseded by the ISO standard, provided the two are consistent and compatible. And that's part of the ongoing development work that, um, that will take place. Well, I think the answer there is that if an organization uh, isn't managing its energy consumption, is not paying attention to it, then the figures that are used, and I think are reasonably well proven, is that there should be a between 10 and 20 percent reduction in energy use and cost in general terms. Clearly, there will be those organizations that are perhaps better than they thought they were, and they can't achieve so much, and there may be others that are worse. But typically, if an organization hasn't done very much, you're looking at that sort of all Order of saving. And of course, some of that will come from what we call the low hanging fruit. In other words, obvious things to do with not much cost involved, but others, of course, will require capital investment and may take time to put into place and to justify and so on.